In this example, the goal is to find the value of the load resistor connected between terminals A and B that will draw maximum power from this given circuit. And also we need to find the maximum value of this power that is delivered to the load resistor. To solve this maximum power transfer problem, the general steps are as follows. First, we need to find the Thevenin equivalent circuit with respect to the terminals A and B. Next, setting the load resistance equal to the Thevenin resistance will draw the maximum power from the circuit. This is the condition for maximum power transfer, maximum power transferred to a resistive load. And the value of this maximum power transferred is given as follows. So let's see how we can solve this problem. The first step is to find the Thevenin equivalent circuit with respect to terminals A and B. This involves finding the Thevenin voltage and the Thevenin resistance. To find the Thevenin resistance, we have to remove the load resistor. This has already been done here. We have terminals A and B with the load resistor removed. And now we need to find the open circuit voltage between terminals A and B. This can be done using any circuit analysis technique. Let's see how we can use node voltage method to find V Thevenin. The main steps to using the node voltage method are listed here. Let's see how these steps can be applied to determine the Thevenin voltage. We can choose to ground this node and then the voltage at this node actually becomes V Thevenin. So we can denote that by labeling it VTH and the voltage at this essential node we can denote as V1. Mark branch currents flowing away from the node. So at this node 1 we have 4 branch currents and at the second node we have 3 branch currents. Now we can apply Kirchhoff current law to these nodes. So this first branch current is voltage at this side V1 minus voltage here which is 280 volts because the voltage source is directly connected between this point and ground divided by the resistance. So we get V1 minus 280 over 2000. The second branch current through this resistor is V1 minus 0 over 2000. Through this resistor is V1 minus VTH over 2000. In this last branch, there is a dependent current source. So this is actually a current controlled current source. And therefore, this branch current must be equal to this magnitude. And the direction of this branch current is the same as the current source direction. Hence, we get plus 0.2 I delta is equal to 0. Applying KCL to this node, we get the first branch current is VTH minus 0 over 5600 and then VTH minus V1 over 2000. This branch current is in opposite to the direction of the current source. So we get minus 0.2 I delta is equal to zero. Since we have a dependent source in the circuit, we need to write the dependent source constraint equation, which means we need to express this variable I delta in terms of node voltages. So the dependent source constraint equation is I delta, this is the current shown here. So this is voltage at this side minus voltage at this side divided by resistance. So this is 280 minus V1 over 2000. Thus, we see that in this circuit, we have three equations and three unknowns. And these can be solved to show that V1 is equal to 120 volts. 
V thevenin is 112 volts and I delta is 0 0.08 amps. Thus, we have found the thevenin voltage for this circuit. The next step is to find the thevenin resistance. The given circuit has both independent and dependent sources. Thus, we can use method 1, circuit analysis method, or we can use a combination of method 2 and 3, that is first deactivating the independent sources and then applying a test source to find RTH. In this example, let us use method 1 to find uh, RTH. So method 1 says we need to short circuit the terminals of interest and then find this current I short circuit and then R thevenin is given by V thevenin over I short circuit. When we short circuit the terminals of interest, we can see that in this circuit, this resistor, the 5.6 kilo ohm resistor is in parallel to the short circuit. Since current takes the path of least resistance, all the current will flow through the short circuit path and this resistor can be effectively removed for the purpose of circuit analysis. So this is shown here. This is the same circuit redrawn with the short circuit path replacing I, replacing the 5 kilo ohm resistor. Thus, the circuit analysis task is to find this short circuit current. This current can be found using either mesh current method or node voltage method. Suppose we use node voltage method to find I short circuit. Then we can ground this node. And because of the short circuit path, the voltage at this essential node is 0 volts. And this is the only node where the node voltage is not known. Suppose we label this as Vx. Now we can apply Kirchhoff current law to this node and write the circuit equation. So the circuit equation becomes Vx minus 280 over 2000 plus Vx minus 0 over 2000 and this branch current will be Vx minus 0 over 2000 and this branch current will be plus 0.2i delta is equal to 0. Also we need to write the dependent source constraint equation which is i delta is 280 minus Vx over 2000. Thus we can see that we have two equations and two unknowns and solving them gives Vx is 80 volts and I delta is 0.1 amp. Once we have found this node voltage, we can now find the short circuit current. So we can apply Kirchhoff current law to this node and we can see that the sum of currents entering, so this branch current plus this branch current equals I short circuit. So we can find now I short circuit is equal to 0.2 I delta plus Vx minus 0 over 2000. So this branch current plus this branch current gives I short circuit. We have already found the value of I delta and Vx and substituting this value gives 0 0.06 amps. Thus we can find R thevenin. So R thevenin is V thevenin which we found previously as 112 volts divided by I short circuit and this gives the value 5600 divided by 3 ohms. So this shows how we can use method 1 to find R thevenin for this given circuit. 
Once we have found V Thevenin and R Thevenin, we can now solve the maximum power transfer problem. So the value of RL that will draw maximum power from this circuit is when RL is set equal to R Thevenin, so has a value 5600 over 3, which is 1866.67 ohm. So this is the first answer. The value of RL must be set equal to R Thevenin in order to draw maximum power from this circuit. To find the value of the maximum power, we can either use this formula or we can do it by, by circuit analysis. For instance, if we do it by circuit analysis, so this current I will be the voltage divided by the resistance and we have two resistors in series. So we get this value and this value comes out 3 over 100 amps and now the power dissipated in the load resistor is I squared RL and substituting the values we get 3 over 100 squared and RL is set to this value and this gives 42 over 25 which is 1.68 watts. So this is the value of the maximum power transferred to the load when RL is set to this value. Alternatively, we can use the maximum power transfer formula and this is V Thevenin squared over 4RL and substituting the values 112 squared and RL is set to this value and this also comes out the same 42 over 25 which is 1.68 watt. Thus a value of RL set to this value will draw this power from the circuit which is the maximum power transferred to the load. We can use LT spice to verify the value of the maximum power transferred. This is the same circuit set up in LT Spice and we have set up a DC sweep for the value of RL ranging from 1 to 5000 ohm with a step size of 100. When we simulate, the voltage across RL is denoted by node 2. This is being shown in the bottom left corner. So in the plot, we can right click and add trace and then the power dissipated in the resistor is V squared over R. So here the voltage is the voltage at the second node and the resistance value is RL. So entering this expression will actually plot the power dissipated in this RL. And we can see that the power is zero when RL is zero and it reaches a maximum value of 1.68 watts when the value is 1.867 ohm and then afterwards the power dissipated slowly goes to zero as the value of RL is increased. So this shows that the, this reconfirms the solution.